Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. What is the most effective way to build as much muscle while training as little as possible? Today we're dissecting the latest science behind just this, step by step. We'll uncover how to effectively manipulate all the training variables, as well as utilize advanced techniques to successfully cut the amount you train while still trying to gain as much as possible. Let's dive straight in. At the House of Hypertrophy, we've seen countless times that reps between 6 to 35 produce similar muscle hypertrophy, provided you're getting too or close to failure. Reps below 6 can still build muscle, but appear to require extra sets. For example, one paper finds per exercise, 7 sets of 3 reps produced similar muscle gains to 3 sets of 10 reps. A second paper found that 7 sets of 4 reps produced similar muscle gains to 3 sets of 12 reps. Thus, if time is of the essence, it's best to train within that 6 to 35 rep range. Sticking to the 6 to 12 rep zone may save time due to fewer total reps, although this does require you to load up heavier weights, which sometimes cancels out time saved. As for repetition speed, despite it being widely believed slower tempos are needed for maximum growth, this recent review established the scientific literature finds repetition durations between 2 to 8 seconds are likely comparably effective for building muscle so you may lean toward the faster end of the spectrum to save time. Some prefer combining a faster lifting tempo with a slower controlled lowering tempo. There is some evidence this builds muscle better, but it's not a consistent finding. Nevertheless, I believe this is a perfectly fine thing to do if you enjoy it. The scientific literature suggests the total number of sets you perform is likely more important than how many times per week a muscle is trained, so let's start with sets. To make sure we're all on the same page, say you train two sets of back squats on Monday, two sets of leg presses on Wednesday, and two sets of leg extensions on Friday. This totals up to six weekly sets for the quads. On average, the available data points towards 12 to 20 weekly sets per muscle group probably being near ideal. Recent data suggests more than this might be better under specific circumstances. But can we still see notable gains with fewer sets? As suggested by this meta-analysis, the answer is yes. Meta-analyses combine the results of numerous papers. Firstly, I need to mention that the published paper of this analysis actually contains a counting error. Many people are unfortunately unaware of this, and so when you see the numbers of this analysis in other videos, it is not entirely correct. Here, I'll be reporting the fixed numbers I obtained from an article by one of the authors of the paper. The analysis found fewer than 5 weekly sets for a muscle still produced measurable hypertrophy. It produced 53% of the growth that training with more than 10 weekly sets per muscle group achieved. Now, fewer than 5 sets is vague, but most studies use 2-4 to four weekly sets per muscle. Thus, this may be the minimal amount of training needed to see some fair gains, but I would lean towards 4 weekly sets per muscle as inferred in this review on time-efficient hypertrophy. However, there are some considerations. Most studies used untrained individuals, but we still have a paper finding that three weekly sets per muscle elicited measurable gains in trained men. Regardless, as these results are averages, it's likely some trained individuals, and perhaps even untrained individuals, struggle to grow from these lower sets. In fact, this recent paper found some previously untrained older adults hardly grew with two weekly sets for the quads, but experienced much better gains with 8 weekly sets for the quads. Therefore, consider 2-4 to four weekly sets as a general recommendation. If it's not working for you, or if you want a higher chance of seeing more growth, bump up the numbers. If this is too time consuming, don't worry. We'll soon describe how you can utilize advanced techniques that technically enable you to train with higher volumes while saving time. We mentioned how 6 to 12 reps is generally a good zone to be in with your sets, but do you need to perform these reps to actual failure? A recent meta regression suggests training to failure is superior, but understand that there were limitations that led the researchers to emphasize caution. When dissecting what I feel to be the highest quality papers, stopping 1 to 3 reps from failure seems to produce similar muscle gains to training to failure. But these papers involve training with 6 or more weekly sets per muscle. It's possible with fewer sets, pushing harder and training to failure is better. 
The closest paper that can help us is this one, which had subjects largely perform two weekly sets per muscle. One group went to complete failure, while a second group performed their reps just shy of failure. Muscle mass increases were better with training to failure. As this is one study, and the hypertrophy measure wasn't the most precise, it's most definitely not conclusive evidence. Anyhow, I think it's a solid idea with fewer sets to do your best to train to failure, or at least get as close as you can. How many days per week should you distribute your weekly sets for a muscle across? On average, the most recent scientific literature suggests that when the total number of weekly sets per muscle is kept the same, muscle growth is largely similar regardless of how many days per week you distribute those sets across. Thus, you're free to select whatever frequency you prefer. We'll provide some training program examples in the next section on exercise selection. Here, I'll be providing two different approaches to exercise selection. Compound exercises train multiple muscle groups, making them time efficient. For instance, squatting motions can significantly grow the quads, gluteus maximus, and adductors. Pushing exercises like the bench press can effectively grow the chest, triceps, and front delts. As a bare minimum, the simple first approach is to have a pushing exercise, pulling exercise, squatting motion, and hip dominant exercise. These collectively stimulate nearly every muscle in the body. If you have extra time, adding some isolation exercises to target your choice of muscles can be worthwhile to balance things, be it isolation for the biceps, triceps, side delts, or even leg isolation. Here's a very simple example. We're largely getting two to four weekly sets per muscle, and it may be most practical to divide this into two sessions per week. Besides the simple approach, a more complex second approach is to divide our sets across greater exercise variety for more complete muscular development. At the House of Hypertrophy, we currently have an ongoing series on optimally developing each muscle, and the knowledge in these videos can help you identify which exercise combinations can be beneficial. Even so, here's an example two-day week program that I crafted with the help of the excellent Alpha Progression app, largely involving two to four weekly sets per muscle. For the quads, we have squats on one day which highly develop the vasty quad heads, and leg extensions the other day which targets the rectus femoris of the quads much better than squatting motions. For the hamstrings, we have Romanian deadlifts on one day, and seated leg curls on the other, and these different motions likely target slightly different hamstring regions. For the glutes, both the squats and RDLs will help develop it. For the chest, we have the bench press on one day, and incline on the second day which can help bring up the upper chest. For the back, we have pull downs on one day, and barbell rows on the other day, and these likely preferentially target slightly different areas of the back. Finally, we have some isolation exercise to potentiate biceps, triceps, side delt, calf, and ab growth. Some machine exercises are involved, but this is perfectly fine as the scientific literature finds machine exercises can be similarly effective to free weights for building muscle. A lot of these exercises involve attaining a great stretch, this is purposeful, as emerging evidence suggests these types of exercises are powerful for building muscle. For example, seated leg curls attain a greater hamstring stretch than lying leg curls and appear to produce superior hamstrings hypertrophy. Overhead extensions attain a greater triceps stretch than pushdowns and appear to produce superior triceps hypertrophy. Thus, exercises attaining a stretch can help us reap even more gains from our few sets. Now, there is contention about whether the benefit of stretched exercises persists in the long term, but I'll discuss this in a future video. If you dislike this general program or are just interested in potential alternatives, the Alpha Progression app may help you out. It can generate a program tailored 100% to your needs in a minute or less. Just select the equipment you have, if you want fewer or more sessions per week, the session duration, and if you want to focus or neglect certain muscles. To reduce training time more, sets can be reduced to the recommendations from this video. Plus, there are advanced methods we'll describe soon. During workouts, the app's algorithm dissects your past performance to provide progression recommendations to assist you with making continued gains. 
There are aesthetic graphs that automatically track your progression and a massive exercise database with simplified text and video instructions. The link in the comments and description gives you a free two-week trial and if you like it, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. The app's numerous reviews speak to its high quality. Back to the video. Remember that if these lower set numbers aren't working, bump up the numbers. If this is a time constraint, or if you would just like to shorten training time even more, the scientific literature suggests we can utilize some advanced methods. But before that, it's worth discussing rest time between sets. How long should you rest between your exercise sets? Short rests are commonly recommended for hypertrophy, yet, the research actually finds when total sets are equated, resting around 2.5 to 3 minutes between sets builds more muscle than shorter rest times. Compound exercises are overwhelmingly used in the research finding this. With isolation exercises, it's possible short rest could be fine. Regardless, this still means a significant chunk of typical training is spent resting. Interestingly, it might be possible to build up tolerance to shorter rests so that muscle gains are not compromised. This concept comes from two papers that found progressively decreasing rest time between sets across weeks produced similar muscle gains to a group using the same rest time. More studies are needed to properly validate it, but you could try it out. If it's not appealing, don't worry. Let's now describe some other advanced time-saving methods. The following methods can generally cut your training time down by 50%. Supersets tend to have you perform two exercises back to back and then rest. Supersetting exercises that train different muscles are the best for minimizing fatigue and maintaining performance, with antagonistic supersets being quite popular. These involve training opposing muscle groups. For example, instead of performing three sets of bench presses and then three sets of rows, you perform them supersetted. Research suggests antagonistic supersets largely do not compromise performance. In fact, there are some documented cases of increased performance, such as this paper that found performing leg curls before leg extensions increased the number of reps on the leg extensions. As for research measuring hypertrophy, we have two studies, one supersetting a biceps and triceps exercise and the second supersetting leg curls and leg extensions, both largely finding non-significant differences in muscle gains to normal sets. Non-related supersets are likely also a fine option on the table. Going back to our example program, we could employ these antagonistic supersets and non-related supersets. The Alpha Progression app has a neat feature that enables us to do just this. Based on meta-analytic data, drop sets seem to be mostly similarly effective for building muscle to normal sets. There are different ways drop sets can be performed, but from a time efficiency perspective, the best approach may be to perform reps to or near failure with a load, then immediately reduce the load by 20% and perform reps to or near failure again. Two to four drops are recommended, and we have research suggesting three or four drops may be equivalent in stimulus to three normal sets, while cutting training time down by more than 50%. Drop sets like these are going to be super challenging and tough, and they are probably best used with isolation exercises like the highest quality research on this topic has done. Going back to our example, as opposed to supersetting some of the isolation movements, we could just use drop sets. Again, the Alpha Progression app has a neat feature that permits us to do this. Here, I'll define rest pause training as performing reps to or near failure resting for a short duration, and then performing reps to or near failure again with the same load. You repeat this a couple more times, or until you reach a desired total number of reps. For example, you may have a target of performing 20 overall repetitions with a load you can perform 10 max reps. It may look like this. Fascinatingly, two papers using rest-pause methods such as this have found superior hypertrophy compared to normal sets with one of the papers reporting it cut training time down by 38%. Yet, a potentially critical limitation of these papers is the normal set largely trained much further from failure, thereby limiting our ability to say they prove rest pause is superior. 
Also, I came across this unpublished paper suggesting myoreps, a form of rest pause training, produced comparable muscle gains to normal sets. Hopefully this paper gets published so we can critically dissect it. But all this data at least indicates rest pause training can stimulate time efficient gains. Thus, if this appeals to you, you may explore this method on any exercises you think it could work well with. The 3-7 method seems to originate from a 2005 French fitness book. It has you select a load you can perform around 12 maximum reps. With it, you perform 3 reps, rest for 15 seconds, perform 4 reps, rest, perform 5 reps, rest, perform 6 reps, rest, and then perform a final 7 reps. The final reps are where things get tough. The only published paper on this method found that with a machine biceps exercise, two bouts of the 3-7 method produced superior bicep gains to eight sets of six reps with the same load. Now, this is an odd comparison, as the normal group would have been far from failure on many sets, and a more typical normal set structure would have been a better comparison, so this paper is most certainly not proof the 3-7 method is superior. Even so, some may enjoy this novel form of training, and if it appeals to you, you may explore it with any exercises you think it could work well with. So there we have it. We have thoroughly dissected from top to bottom how time-efficient hypertrophy can be attained. Here are the summary points. Perform 2-4 to four weekly sets for your muscle groups, divided across however many days you prefer, using anywhere from 6 to 12 reps per set and aiming to get to or at least as close to failure as possible, using some exercise variety and selecting movements that attain a great stretch of the muscle can help get the most muscular development out of our fewer sets. Here's an example two-day a week program. Now, some people can see minimal gains from lower set numbers, so if this happens, bump up the set numbers. To save even more time, we can use these range of advanced techniques. If you're a viewer who skipped to the summary, head to these time points to fully understand the execution and science of these methods. Remember to feel free to check out the Alpha Progression app or our ultimate guide to developing the lets.